Hello! Welcome back to Mr. Delayed Intro's Joe 2 and Final Fantasy X 2. There's a lot of twos going on here. So he still says no leads. It's irrelevant. I don't think you actually get leads in this chapter. You just kind of go there. Our next destination, however, is... Where did we leave off? Oh yes, we left off at Mac Macalania Woods. Um, we are all sorts of out of order here, aren't we? Actually, no, we're not. We just have to do this slightly out of order. Yeah, I think so. We don't have to. Might be generally helpful by this point in the chapter actually to do this slightly out of order. Bavel, I think, is one of the last places we end up having to go. In fact, Bavel might actually be the last place we go. Yeah, so we're gonna go to the Calmlands. Go ahead and go to the Calmlands. Screw our ordering system. We ain't got time for that. There are two things in this chapter that we're going to start. One of them is here, one of them is in the Ruins of Xanarkin, which is where we will go next, because why not? Uh, they are Capture, Wi Capture a Wild Chocobo and Operation Monkey. Both of these must be completed by the end of Chapter 3. Which we've not even started yet, so keep that in mind. Something tells me this is where I'll find my calling. I am in your debt, Lady Yuna. Hey, yeah, sure. Basically, if you say no to that, you have to manually run over here, which isn't too bad because we have to do something uh, at the... Oh, now what am I supposed to do? Ugh. I was sure this would be the perfect spot, but it's infested with fiends. I get the feeling you want something. Fiends. Uh, you have to go to the travel agency in the middle of this area and talk to two people specifically. You'll know why we have to talk to them when we actually see them, but we have to talk to two people specifically. So if you don't follow him here and you manually run here, you can do that before you get here, but it's not too much of an issue. Fiends here. Ah, oh, I'm so close, so close. Hey, yeah, sure. Why not? In we go. Now this is actually relatively difficult. If you uh, try and do this early, it's probably still going to be relatively difficult by this point. Exterminate the fiends! Hooray! I am actually going to go ahead and make a extra save right here. And we're not going to overwrite anything. This save is just in case, you know, we get horribly murdered, I can reload from here. Reloading, or any of that nonsense, uh, in the middle of this will reset your progress. What we have to do is we have to kill multiple fiends, and the fiend that we want is the fiend that's facing in a different direction, which looks like it's going to actually be this coral. Now, I really hate corals. With a passion, in fact, do I hate corals, so... Turns out that is, in fact, not the right one. Oh, you know what it is, they're all facing to a point, except for one of them is facing to a different point, isn't it? Which might actually... yep, it's gonna do that, isn't it? It's gonna be one of those, um, ice fiends, which don't face in a direction because they're freaking mirrored. You can't tell which direction, as far as I'm aware, an ice fiend is facing because it's just that. I don't know a means of telling which direction these things are facing, but... It seems like it's gonna be one of those, because everyone else seems to be facing a certain thing. Apparently it's not one of those. Well... So many ice fiends. 
Those will also be facing this way. Or do they face to the fake fiend? I don't remember. Is it you? It is him. I'm just gonna arbitrarily touch things and hope it's the right one. The first fight in this area is not particularly difficult, although he does have poison, which is annoying. Uh, but certain enemy types that you face here are incredibly hard to kill. This one is probably one of the easier ones, and he's still going to put some di some decent damage onto us here with poison. The biggest problem I have is with the coral, because they have like a billion DHP and are kind of annoying. I will touch the save sphere between fights. I will not save, I will not load, I will not do anything. Just want to touch it to get rid of any status ailments we have. It's you. No. Sigh. And you saw a thing popped up and said so many fiends left. That's how many of these fights we have to go through. The fights are set fights, they will always be the same encounter. You know, these all seem to be facing the same way to me. To me, anyway. I'm not an expert on fiend directional facing. Is there more stuff up here? Ah, there is more stuff up here. See, I did not realize that second level was there because I'm a dingle dongle. Now we have to fight a coral and a dingle dongle. These are very specific terms. I'm going to try and kill the armet. Eh, I should probably kill the coral first. They both suck, so... I think we'll try for the coral first. We'll just try and put as much damage as we can on them. The armet is going to hit pretty hard. The coral, however, is going to do that every turn. It also has an ability that drops you to 1 HP, I'm pretty sure, which it will do every other round, I think. It has a set pattern, there it goes. Oh, it just straight up kills you. Okay, well. I was not anticipating quite that. The Armet will spend half of its turns doing defense up, which, quite frankly, I don't really care what it does. Probably should have done Cure instead of Prey. Because stuff like that is going to happen. If we get this Coral down, which is quite the hassle in and of itself, As you can tell, we'll be better off, but looks like we're going to have this whole problem. This is why I hate this situation. Um, I could make a phoenix, but no. This is why I hate this particular mission, this particular part of the chapter, because this dude just kills you over and over and over, and then the Armet will kill whoever you revive because he's a douche, over and over and over. Repeatedly, until you give up on your whole trying to survive thing. Thankfully, he cast uh, defense up. Sadly, however, that coral is going to kill somebody again. Can we get a prey off before someone dies? Little top up on health there. And of course, it is once again our healer. So, guess what we get to do again? And no, this is not the only coral we're going to be fighting. This thing has so much health, it's ridiculously broken. Hey, we killed it. Now I have to deal with that thing. That thing's not a problem in the grand scheme of things here. It does have crazy defense, so we're probably, yeah, we're going to have to start defense breaking it, which I'm not sure we can actually keep up. I probably steal from it. It'll keep spending turns giving itself a defense increase, and we're gonna keep spending turns giving it a defense decrease, so... Basically, we're probably gonna do this until we run out of MP. Hey, Lunar Curtain. We can keep ourselves healed through an armet, that's not too much of an issue. We can't keep ourselves healed through freaking Master Coral, Queen Coral, Bollocks, which is complete stupidity. If it had less health, it would be alright, but the fact that it has that much health and it can instant kill any of your party members every other turn makes it really stupid. 
and Al. If you're curious, by the way, tested this when I did the live stream of this game however long ago that was, uh, silence does not keep it from doing that. Because that is not a magic ability, apparently. It is just an ability which silence does not stop. So, you know, hey, we killed the Armit. Queen Coral basically TLDR, they're broken and OP and probably the stupidest enemy in the game. Alright, so we'll head back down, touch the save sphere to top up on our HP and MP. Sadly, we can't top up on potions. Or sorry, not potions, Phoenix Downs. So they all appear to be looking towards this spawn down here. One of the spawns is triple elementals, which looks like it's probably going to be this one. So let's change Riku to Black Mage to try and help with that. There, I believe it's... Tri oh, I don't know if it's triple one element or just triple different elements. Hopefully it's an element we have... Oh, it's not that one. Hopefully it's an element we have some sort of strength against. So he's facing that way. Facing towards this side. Might be that Armet, actually. So we'll swap Riku back to... I could set her to this, actually. Probably get some additional damage out of her. Because I believe she has Suffer uh, Armets. Yeah, she has Shellcracker. Some additional some additional damage there, if I can pronounce words. And it is this guy. Is this double Armet? No, it's the Iguana and the Armet. Which we have a bonus against both of. The only thing we need to worry about with this fight is the... Um, Skink casting poison on us, which will slow us down quite dramatically. Otherwise, we can heal through basically everything it does. And via the powers of Silver Bullet, hopefully we can do some additional damage. That might not actually be a looping. It is not a looping. Good to know! Oh, it's an iguana, isn't it? Or something stupid like that. I will just kill it the old-fashioned way. And now we get to start working on this thing. Which I could defense break, but it hasn't had enough time to actually get its defense up, so... We might even kill it with just one Shellcracker, depending on how much damage this does. Combo? Nice. That only did 69. Well... That was quite a lot more than she normally does, but... I don't want to burn too much MP, because I need her to have MP for the elemental fight, otherwise we're just going to spend way too much time. I'm not sure, by the way, if these particular enemies can oversoul. If they can, that's even more bollocks, because you can get screwed over and have multiple oversouls in a single fight. Which would be very unfortunate. We'll see. We're just going to continue slow boating this fight. It works for now. I should probably learn um, Big Guard and White Wind at some point. I believe you can learn those really easily, too. At least in this version. I don't believe you could easily learn them in uh, the original North American release, because the only way to get confused was quite a ways into the game, but pretty sure you can learn it easily enough here. I'm just lazy with blue magic in every Final Fantasy I do. Eventually, we will kill this guy, trust me. I should probably use a second Shellcracker, but I don't know what his health is at. Let's do it. Watch him be, like, right next to death. Oh, he's not dead. So, hey, we learned Flan Eater. Eventually, we'll kill him. Trust me, I'm an expert. Hey, there we go. So we're halfway there. There is another fight with a coral in it, I'm pretty sure. So they're all facing this way. Then they start facing that way, so it might be upstairs. Let's go touch the save point. I just wanted to check, see if it was over here. It might be upstairs, it might actually be that thing down there. I don't know. 
We will check upstairs, though. Because I think this is like halfway. Looks like the creature's up here halfway. You're facing forward. You're facing forward. They all. Well, these are all freaking elementals that I can't see. Well, they're facing forward. These two are facing this way. And at least two of those are facing this way. So it could be this guy. Leave her on gun mage. Who is this guy? Oh, we got three of them. Uh, let's try and get a couple of these armets down before they start going crazy with defense up. Because Shellcracker will do a lot of damage before defense up comes in. Like so. Uh, let's get... Shellcracker started on the second one. Because I think that first one's close to death. At least, I hope it's close to death. I'm not actually sure how much health these things have, but that should have done at least half of its health and damage. Now it's going to spend the rest of its time casting freaking defense up just to mock me. Did I tell her to attack? No. We'll keep her focused on the second one while Pain works down the first one. The third one will probably just slow boat. There we go. You know, actually, we'll probably armor break the third one. Second one should be close-ish to dead, maybe? I hope. I wish it would stop casting defense up every single turn it gets, because that's moderately annoying. Come on. You can't be that... Well, he is casting defense up every turn, but he can't have that much health left that it's taking this long. Apparently he does. Which is moderately annoying. Come on. I don't want to use another shell crack breaker, cracker, whatever it's called. Ah, sigh. Technically, you can kill these faster by using black magic, so I might actually swap her to black magic. I used to think you can. Could be mistaken. Can we just kill that one? Fine, we'll do a shell cracker. Just because it won't die. It's infuriating me. Still not dead. Good lord. This thing has way more health left than I thought it did. There we go. Out of curiosity, let us, let's actually swap her. I don't have mental break, so I can't do mental break. So I may as well just power... Or, uh, I didn't mean to power break. Armor break in the meantime. That's the wrong button. I was just mashing my face buttons and I hit start on accident. Still have it short with these. To be fair, we only really see it usually once every couple of videos because I swap it outside of battle. I don't believe he has an elemental weakness. So we'll just cast whatever I feel like. If you wanted to, you could power break these things so they did effectively no damage, but it's not particularly helpful. Especially since prey can heal through them, it's not too much of an issue. Come on, Riku. You're like the main damage dealer in this group for every single encounter. Literally every encounter, because she's the only person I've leveled Black Mage with. There we go. Nice work. I said the encounters were set when we started this. Uh, it seems like the particular fiend that you get is random. It looks like we are going to get another coral, though, sadly. But the layouts for the fiends are set. There are certain layouts that it will use. So we're going to get another coral. Um, I'm pretty sure corals have huge uh, magic defense. But out of curiosity to see what kind of damage she does, I think we might leave Riku as she is. We need the white mage, so... So you're facing up, you're down, you're down. 
So inconveniently, it's either one of these two. Which are both coral. I don't know what it is, so let's go with this one. And it is that one. Hopefully it's just one coral. It's one coral and an iguana thing. The iguana's not an issue. Except for when it immediately does that. Uh, the coral's already going to insta-kill someone, sadly. Who's it on? It's on her! Let's cast life. It'll have her keep casting Blizzara, because that does massive damage to Skinks, and I am fond of it. Hopefully that prey's not too much of an issue. There we go. So he's casting Blizzaga constantly, which actually healed her, thank you. So we'll counter it with fire, I don't think it'll matter, and it's going to kill someone again. Looks like pain, again. So we'll leave Riku on potential heal duty here. Oh no, it killed her. Well, use Flame Tongue. I didn't see what damage that actually did, because I wasn't paying attention. And you can't reflect that, by the way, if you're curious. You can't reflect it, you can't silence it, you can't do anything. It will basically just kill you of its own volition whenever it feels like. And we're just going to keep casting fire, even though it doesn't matter. Hopefully we can kill it before it kills someone else. Which we didn't. Pop a phoenix down, see if we can get it off quick enough. Oh, it's not dead. Should be close to dead, even though I think these things have something ridiculous, like 2500 health or something stupid. Should stop casting basic magic, because I don't know how close to dead it is. I do know she's really close to dead, though. Back to fire, please. Oh, wait, it's gonna kill someone again. Who are we killing? Oh, her. God dang it. This is why I hate corals. If they would just stop doing that every other turn, I'd be much more happy with this situation. But they won't. It's entirely likely... Okay, good. I was gonna say, it's entirely likely he's gonna fo focus fire Yuna and kill her again. Just to be rude. Still not dead. Thought it was way closer than that. Have you, Phoenix, down? If this thing kills me, I'm gonna be very salty about it. It is going to kill her, which is not too much of an issue. Let's cast Blizzara on it. Why not? Hopefully before it kills someone else via Death Gaze or whatever this crap is. Hey! Nice. We interrupted it. That should be the last fiend. Hey. Except for the whole right, except not really right, because there's one more. This might actually be the triple elemental that I was thinking about, but I'm not sure. It is. Thankfully, they give you the opportunity to touch the safe sphere before you run in there. So, triple elemental, we need a black mage. White mage is more or less mandatory via prey, because that will not be interrupted constantly. And pain can be whatever she wants, technically. She would do the most damage as a warrior, but she does have greater defense as a festivalist. She has no abilities as a festivalist either. We'll leave her as a warrior and do this. Bring it, punk. Hopefully, hopefully this goes as well as I desire it to. So, flame tongue. These are all ice elementals. We're gonna try and focus these down as best we can because they do this. And it's really annoying. Thankfully, as I mentioned, Prey is not interrupted by magic casting. So, via the liberal usage of Prey, that is not the element I thought it was. We should be using fire. My bad. Not fire. Uh, lightning. Thunderblade. They will counter magic with silence, by the way. So make sure your mage, your black mage, has uh, silence protection. They will also use magic up constantly, which is annoying. The 
The faster you can get one of these down, the, the more damage you'll start doing, because the less frequent interruptions you get from their bollocks. There we go. More or less, one Thundara plus one Thunderblade plus one physical attack seems to do well enough to get these guys killed. If you take too long and you let them get their magic increase multiple times... I wish they hadn't silenced her, but whatever. It's not an issue because she doesn't use magic. Uh, if you let them get their magic increased three or four times, they're going to start wrecking your whole party for 150 damage apiece per turn, so you got to be careful about that. This should be dead. There we go. The biggest problem in this entire area is the corals, because they kill a party member every other turn, oh, whereas nothing so else much. in the game... At last, my dream can come true. Unless you're horribly okay. underleveled, we'll do that. I'm going to start a chocobo ranch! No one will bother me here. I can finally raise chocobos in peace! Good luck! Oh no! I can't raise anything without a chocobo! You've got your work cut out for you. Mission complete! Hooray! And we get tons of XP from doing this, which is really nice. Alchemist Dress Sphere and High, Wind Rin High Road Winds. So now we can capture chocobos, which you need, as I mentioned, you need to capture a chocobo before the end of Chapter 3, so bear that in mind. Go ahead and have a look at our... Uh, stuff that we got. Where did it go? There it is. So when we equip it, we get First Strike, which is actually really useful, and Slow Proof, which is also fairly useful. And you can see the stuff we get as we move around the grid. The Probably the biggest thing about this, and we're probably going to start using this on certain people, is the fact that you can easily get Haste, just from, and Stop Proof for that matter, but mo notably Haste, just from moving one grid. So there are instances where that is extremely useful. And we also got a Dress Sphere which I can get to it. Alchemist. Alchemist is probably the greatest healing class in the game because of the speed at which it can heal because of the fact that it uses items rather than casting magic and stuff like that. Expensive class to use because of the fact that it uses items, but very powerful healer. That's kind of a, a late game primary healer kind of thing. Uh... I won't be using it very much on camera, but I will be taking time to give it some some AP, give it some XP, whatever, on my own time. Primarily when I go around and do the whole advertising thing, which is going to be almost entirely off camera. Remember, we have a mission for getting a thousand points with the agency of choice that we chose in chapter one, I believe, towards the end of chapter one, actually. Which I believe there's a way to check. I forgot who we were with. I don't want to play Reptile Run. Um, publicity menu. How am I doing? Two. Publicity level one. We need a thousand. Takes a while. Primarily that just, you just run around and push square next to people. So that's not a thing I'm going to be showing because it's incredibly boring. I think you could actually get a ride to the travel agency from that, but I forgot. So we're just going to slow boat it. Um, where are we? Are we above the thing? Traveling? No, there it is. I was trying to guess by the mini-map, but I couldn't remember where in the world that mini-map looks like that on the calm lands. So here's the people we have to talk to, by the way. Hi, Summoner Yuna. I am Leon Ronso. We have not met. Nice to meet you, Leon. And this is... Aid Ronso. Hello, Aid. <clears throat> we are happy to meet you. Leon and Aid hear many stories of Lady Yuna. Elder Kimari tells of your journey together. But please, do not speak to Elder of meeting Leon and Aid today. Why not? Oh! You must be the two kids who left Mount Gagazet, right? Kimari's really worried. Should we take them back? Yeah. Too late! What? I 
it can really move. There you go. So for the Calm Lands, that's all we need to do. Apart, well, we need to capture a Wild Chocobo, but that's not necessarily attached directly to the Calm Lands. Someone mentioned that I did not grab uh, this particular mission here. This mission is not required for 100% completion. However, you get some decent items from it. I'm going to go ahead and grab it since we're here. Fruit of my loins, indeed. Want to get hitch? Do I ever? So there we go. Ought to be simple enough. Sure. Basically, this functions similarly to the advertisement agency. We basically just run around and press square next to people and tell them what they want to hear. Uh, he gives you really good items. If you finish this whole thing to, you know, a suitable measure, it's not required for 100% though. What do you have for sale? Bunch of crap I already have, apparently. So we're gonna go ahead and board the old airship and call it there. The next video is gonna be a series of relatively short areas that we're gonna end up going to. Sadly, but you know. There are short and there are long things. Teehee. Uh, we may as well save over this one because we're not going to need to load that save. That was, as you recall, my temporary save in case we got a game over in that area. This should put us up to 36.2. And it's curious that that is worth less than um, Makalania Woods, which was a much shorter area, but whatever. So 36, yep, we're good. So there you go, we're making slow, if, you know, technically correct progress. But I will see you guys next time where we'll run through probably the Seneca Ruins, Jose Temple, and Bicanel Desert before I run out of time. So thanks for watching, see you then.